Okay, so children, now that Purim is over, what holiday is coming up? Pesach. Right. Now, Pesach, the whole story of Pesach starts off in the land of? Israel. No, 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 in the land of? Egypt. 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 Who was the first one of the Shvatim to land up in Egypt? Yes. Thank you, yes. Shneer. Now, children, Yosef, when he first goes down to Egypt, you would think that he was really grumpy and upset. Oh, how could the brothers have done this to me? And he lands up Nebuchadnezzar in prison, even though he did nothing wrong, etc., etc. He was an innocent boy, and yet he kept getting accused falsely. How old was children. he? Wait, he was how 17. How old was he? 17. But, 17. but, children, Yosef we see doesn't get upset at all. In fact, he's always happy, even in prison, when he sees the butler and the baker, that they're so sad. He tells them, Why are your faces looking so depressed and sad today? I mean, it makes sense. Why wouldn't they be depressed though in prison? And yet Yosef was never depressed. Yosef was always happy. He knew that what? Ever happens is really from who? Hashem. And he never blamed anyone. He never turned around and said, Oh, look at those brothers of mine. They sold me as a slave. Not fair. I am such a victim of un being people unfair to me. He didn't talk like that at all. He understood and he accepted that everything is from Hashem. And whatever comes our way is because Hashem made it happen. And we have to try and do our best. From it, rather than point fingers and blaming others, we have to try in whatever situation we find ourselves in to say Gamzula Tova, be happy and try to make the best of it. And Yosef really did to the point that in the end we see because he was always joyful, always happy, always trying to help others. In the end, he becomes what? What does he become? The king. Second to the king. Now Yosef wasn't angry, wasn't upset, was never complaining, but there was one thing worried him tremendously. His father. Well, he worried about his father being worried, but his father crying for him. But actually, children, what worried Yosef very, very much his is brother? that he was here in Egypt. He was, to the oh, best of his art knowledge, the only Jewish person in the whole of Egypt. Was him. And him. now he's going to need to get married. And how in the world will he find who does he marry? A Jewish girl. That's the story I'm telling you. Oh. Where will he find in Egypt a Jewish girl to marry? So why does not, he... not only that, How old was but he? he was 30 years old when he became hey. king. And he really needed... No, no, no. I'm saying like, like how old he was... Really he really needed was... to get married now that he's 30. And how would he find... A Jewish girl to marry, and not only that, but King Paro told him, Ha! I'm making you second to the king. But you can't stay single. You can't be without a wife. What kind of king is a king without a queen? You have to get married. Yosef really didn't want to get married. And Yosef said, Well, I don't really know how I'm going to go about finding a wife right now. And King Paro said, No problem. Here in Egypt, we have a custom. That when it's time for the king or a prince to get married, he gets paraded through the town in a golden chariot, oh. wearing a golden crown, and surrounded by lots and lots of pomp and excitement. There'll be people playing music, and people, people, um, decorating the streets with flowers. There'll be people chanting and singing and jugglers. And people making what are jugglers like to juggle to juggle balls, but they would juggle fire, <gasps> and they'd be like a whole carnival, a whole parade, and then all the girls come out. That's how the Egyptians used to do it. And throw flowers. And no, all the girls come out, but you're close enough. They throw on the king oh, their I know this jewelry. Mm. And the girl's jewelry the king likes the most, whichever girl sent the most beautiful and the most gorgeous, and, and, he can pick and that piece of jewelry. And, and Haman has a jewelry. Right, Haman has jewelry. But we're not talking about Haman today. And whichever girl sends the most expensive piece of jewelry, the one that the king and liked, that's the girl that will get to be 
to deserve to be the next queen. Now, so yes. very, obviously, this is actually a very silly way of going about getting a wife. I know. We don't marry a person for money, guys. We yeah. marry a person because they have midot tovot yeah. and yirat shamayim. But Yosef thinks, great, I'll pretend that I didn't like any of the jewelry and then I won't have to marry anyone. Because Yosef certainly didn't want to marry an Egyptian girl. And so, children. How old was she? He was 30 years old. I thought you said 13. 30, 30. And so, oh, yeah, children, yeah. Yosef Hatzadik puts on the royal robes and puts on his beautiful crown. And they had given him a gold plate to wear around, like That's a, a gold. thick gold necklace to wear around oh. his neck. And Yosef thinks, oh, I'm very able to help. Can't believe I have to do this. It's so ridiculous. And of course, children, Yosef was also very tsanua. He didn't like that the girls were staring at him at all. It's not a tsanua thing to do. Really? Not so but he did, it's not so sneeistic, right? And, but he didn't have a choice, children. He figured he'd just sit in, the, sit in his wagon and try to put his head down and not like wave to the crowd and hi, hi. Sleep, sleep. And, well, he didn't quite sleep, but he kind of pretended to just look at his lap and keep checking what jewelry came so he doesn't really have to show his face. And he gets to parade through the streets. And um, as he's being paraded, music is, is being played and dancers are dancing and jugglers are juggling fire. And they bring out all these like interesting animals. They decorate elephants and tigers on leashes. And it's a whole whole parade and of course all the girls came those girls knew about it and all the wealthy girls all came running and all came joyfully to throw their jewelry at the king and each one hoped oh i hope he picks my jewelry oh i hope he picks my jewelry now of course yosef had no intention of picking any one of these pieces of jewelry now okay, no. that's yosef now I'm going to tell you a story of a girl, and you're going to see how the two tie together. This girl's I name. She saves his life. This um, kind of. I think you're mixing it with Moshe and Sipora. Sipora saves Moshe's Rabbeinu's life. Yeah. And I'll tell you that story. I know as this we tell. story. Yeah, that's going to be the next story that comes up. But this I one. I know this story. No, no. I know. I know. No, he was I in. Mommy. No, she mommy. saved she mommy. mommy. Yeah, he saved. Yeah, I saved life. Oh, snot? No, no, yeah, she... How? Remember when the, when he was brought to court in Egypt? In a he, From the coat? In a one more. I didn't yeah. know a snot saved his life. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. That's what I heard last year. Snot was the adopted daughter of yeah. Potipharach. And I, I heard... I didn't hear that detail of the story. I well, no I idea. learned it last year because that's the part really? where I was learning last year. Go and go and tell yes. us. She saved... He, she was the one who told him about the garments of him. That the garments was if she pulled them from the front. It was then, her. Yeah, that was her. I have no idea. That's, That's what not, I heard. Oh, I heard that those were the hard to meme. The 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 very the, uh, the very important no. people in Egypt, like the very smart. The yellow. Yeah, I did not I know that. No, I, I guess. Yeah, okay, I heard that. I didn't know. Thank you, sweet. Okay. Either way. Yeah. So the story, the story I heard, I didn't know that she was the one who told them that, but that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. But children, Osnat actually wasn't really Potipharach's daughter at all. Really, his son. His she was brother, his adopted, adopted daughter. Daughter. Who was Osnat? I'll tell you. The, who Osnat the, was the, the grandchild of Yaakov. Okay. Now let's tell the story of how she was Yaakov's grandchild. Yaakov had twelve Yaakov. sons and one daughter by the name of uh, Dina. Yeah, Dina. I know. And children, Dina. Dina one day goes yeah. out to go, and if you learn Chanmare Chazal, she went out because she wanted to teach the girls in the neighborhood about Hashem. Just like Abraham Avinu taught people to dive into Hashem and thank Hashem. Oh, she I'm taught sorry. the girls about Hashem. And it's she like, went out, like and a very bad man saw her. Oh, His oh, name oh, was. I know. And you Shem know saw her. Shem ben Hamar. You're telling me Shem, Shem the son of a donkey. He was, a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> he was absolutely horrible. Mommy, can I know, Shem? Know. Which one did you? The one I'm using here. Uh, which one did I use? Shem ben Hamar, guys, sees 
sees Dina. And he thinks, wow, I've never seen such a gorgeous girl. I have to marry her. She has to be my wife. And Kitty kidnaps her. Oh. And it was very, very sad. And it was actually... But, but it wasn't such a good thing with the thing it, it, it was actually... It was a very, very, very sad thing, children. What? And no, that he no, kidnapped her. No, uh, no. I that he kidnapped her. And, kids, he forced her to marry him. Oh, and it's a long story. You won't get into it. Yeah, I remember what it was and, last year. And kids, kids. I know. I also. And she I, marries I him, even though she didn't want to marry him or come anywhere near him. Okay, how much? But he forced her. And how much? And, and, and he's a good guy. Right, good guy. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. And and children, he he forced her to marry him. And kids, she gets a baby. The baby is a little girl. Whom they name Osnat. She names him Osnat. Uh, of course, Shem's already dead because the brothers all killed him. Thank God. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And when Osnat gets older, and she finds out that she was born through this horrible marriage where Shem forced his her mummy to marry him, she becomes very ashamed and she thinks, "Wow, the man who's my father is such a horrible man," and he forced my mommy to marry him and actually children Osnat was very embarrassed and Osnat at a very young age kids from what I've understood she was only eight years old run oh, away age. from home why she I don't know she felt like she wasn't good enough to be among the Jewish people I don't know how but she sells a slave herself as a slave and she lands up as a slave in Egypt just like yourself. Now, children, every one of Yaakov Zavinu's children and grandchildren received a very special gift from Yaakov Avinu. They received a necklace with a little piece of parchment, uh, like, a, like, like a, about a clap of a separate, yes, like a mezuzah, yeah. that had written, and it's just a pasuk Shema Israel Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. And it was wrapped up, it was a small leather pouch and she received it and I don't know exactly how but she lands up also as first being a slave in Potipharach's house and then because Potipharach and his wife Zulecha never how, had how any bad children were they? I don't know darling some say Zulecha was actually did a bit forget that she was did, did, some people were, oh. did, did she ever forget that she was a Jew or no not? no it's not never forgot Really? And of course not. And and um, Potipharach's wife Zulecha and Potipharach, because they had no children, decide to kind of adopt her. But she was really still a slave girl. She didn't have jewelry. She didn't have money. She wasn't like a rich, powerful girl. And Wait, how old she comes she? out at the point of this. Eight. It. She would have been twenty at this party, darling, because. Because I think maybe a little Why didn't younger. She go? Why didn't I don't she know go? her exact age. At the time when this when 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 Yosef was thirty, I think she may have been twenty, but I might be wrong. Why didn't she I don't know, I can figure it out after checking my dress. Why didn't she go? Ten years younger. Yeah, ten no, years. now everyone had to go to Why? see this parade. She oh, yeah, comes out probably. too. And she was so curious. Who is this? Person. Uh, guys, by the way, it's interesting that Yosef says she know. actually knew him and that she um, I knew. she spoke up for him. So it's possible. I don't know. I did. I never learned that. Thank you, Yosef, for teaching me. And But either way, we'll say it the way I learned it. Yosef. I know. Yosef, sorry, Schneer. I meant Schneer. Okay. And she comes out. She comes out. She comes out to the parade. And all the rich girls are all climbing on top of the walls to look at Yosef because he was so handsome. Can I open up the door? And poor Yosef is so uncomfortable. And children, she... Oh, okay, Yosef, she has a scenario open, although it's interrupting the video. She, um... She stands and she's watching oh. and she sees... The, uh, I'm so sorry. Please come in. Mechila, hi, how are you? Mechila, beferwaid, please. I'm so sorry. My husband's not home right now. Would you like to come in and wait for him? 
what you know and what time is that? he didn't give me a message but I presume I don't know do you want to call him I can I give you him Mechila I'm sorry <laughs> please come in yes. please you're welcome that is okay. I'm sorry yeah. thank you I'm so sorry um so so I don't know how to pause videos I'm so sorry okay not now not now not now so children Yosef Osnat is standing and she's watching and she thinks oh thank god I don't have to get I'm not a rich girl I don't need to get involved in this parade but she had to come out out, out of a sense of respect everyone was coming out as respect for the coronation of the new king and the new king getting a new queen and she's standing there when all of a sudden she feels like a jabbing on her side and it's a Egyptian guard mommy, mommy, and he tells her hey you girl what kind of respect mommy, do you think you have mommy, mommy, how come you're not throwing any jewelry to the king and she says oh I, I don't have anything and he says well you've got something around your neck and he pulls it off her neck he goes throw that one and of course she didn't want to throw it it was from her grandfather from from but, Yaakov Avinu but the guard was standing there threatening and having a like a stick with a whip in his hand and before she knew what's what I don't know if she threw it or he picked it up and threw it and it gets thrown and it lands right in Yosef's lap oh now of course Yosef is riding and he's just oh, he doesn't want to look at all this horrible girl staring at him and he's looking at his lap and fidgeting with his fingers and thinking throws this piece of jewelry out I don't like this I don't like that Wait, of course he couldn't care Two hoots about the jewelry. It was his way of showing, I don't want to marry this one, I don't want to marry that one. But all of a sudden, to his utter surprise, he finds a piece of parchment, like a leather pouch. It's actually called a kamiya in Hebrew. That is, you know, Kayla, why don't you color over there and then we'll do that one? Okay, but it's a little bit blocking. So he finds a kamiya on his lap. He says, that's so strange. That looks exactly like the Kamiya I hide inside my clothes. Yes, that I hide inside my clothes. In a second, in a second. I always finish the story. And where in the world did this come from? Okay, turn it down. I'm finishing the story and then, okay? So, good task, So, what does he do? Hello, Esti, can you take her yeah. store to, to tell Rachelie to put her in the bath, please? Let down. Yeah. Thank you. Go, go, go. Go in the bath. Yeah. Mommy, go. Yeah. Okay, Esti's going to help you upstairs. Okay, Mommy, let go. Yeah, but Kayla wants to look at me. Yes, she's coming. Oh, she's coming. So, children, <laughs> Yosef yeah. picks up the Kamiya and he says, Hey, <laughs> yes, go ahead. He says, Hey, <laughs> Who gave me this? He opens it up and he sees that. Please. Rabbi, this is an envelope for someone. I just leave it here. No, but thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So he opens it up and he sees that. It's the Shema Yisrael. And now Yosef is bewildered. How is there a girl in Egypt who's got Shema Yisrael tied around her neck? And he tells his guards, stop the wagon, stop the carriage. And they all stop the wagon. And they say, hey, the king chose a piece of jewelry, he chose a piece of jewelry. And he holds up this parchment. And he says, to whom does this belong? And everybody gasps. <gasps> Somebody did throw a piece of parchment, a piece of leather on the king instead of jewelry. Whoa, whoever this girl is, she's going to get punished. How disrespectful. Whoa, and he starts to look at look. And now the guard who was really mean, the guard who pulled it off Osnat's neck, said, I know which girl that is. And he yanks her. And he says, here she is. And he takes her. And he schleps her in front of <laughs> Yosef Asadik. And poor Osnat standing there trembling. She didn't mean to be disrespectful. She suddenly didn't want to marry this king. And For a second she did marry and he is. She says, and and uh, uh, they bring her in and Yosef looks at her. 
Now, I believe Osnat looked very much like Dina. And he begins to realize she looks like his family, but he can't figure out who she is. And he tells her, is this yours? And she says, yes, it is. And he thinks, well, maybe she stole it. He didn't know, because she was a servant girl. He says, how did you get this? You better tell me the truth and promise. Like, make sure you tell me the truth. And she says, I'm so sorry, Your Royal Highness. I didn't mean to. I wasn't being disrespectful. I just had to throw something and I didn't have anything. This is the only thing I have that my grandfather gave me. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Because your grandfather, who's your grandfather? And she says, oh, you wouldn't know him. He lives very far. He's not from here. And Yosef says, I want to know what's his name. She says, well, my, my grandfather actually is a very, very great holy man. His name is Yaakov Avinu and he gave it to me. He gave it to all his children and grandchildren. And Yosef Atzadik says, How are you, Yaakov's granddaughter? And Osnat says, Well, my mother Dina, that's his daughter. That's how I'm, my mother is Dina, his daughter. And, and, um, and the daughter. Mommy, what's and the baby name? He says, Mommy, what's the baby she, name? The baby's name was Osnat, and now she's big. And she says, she says, and I'm so, so sorry. And Yosef says, well, come with me. I want to meet you. I want to get you better. And people were shocked. Instead of taking her and killing her and flogging her or whipping her or something, he says he likes her and he wants to know her. Now us nuts worried. You want to marry this? What she thought was an Egyptian king. She goes, no, no, no. You don't want to marry me. I'm, I'm just, I'm just a, a Jewish girl. And not only that, my mommy was forced into marriage by Shechem. I, I she didn't even want to marry my the man who became my father, Shechem. And, and you don't want to marry me. He says, I want to talk to you alone. And poor Osnat's trembling and davening to Hashem that this king will not want to marry him. <laughs> She's like, why? I'm so poor. You don't want to marry me. And he says, no, I want to get to know you better. <laughs> now, Yosef realizes that Osnat doesn't want to marry him because she thinks he's a guy. <laughs> yeah, he yeah to, and he's King Power. Right, he has to reveal to her that really he's Jewish. He says, come with me. And he takes her to his palace and kids. He pulls out from around his no. neck his own kamiya with Shema Yisrael on it. And he tells her, look. And she takes it and she opens it and she shows. She goes, how, how did you open this? And he says to her, I'm your uncle, Yosef. <laughs> Yosef who got sold as a slave. And now it was Osnat's turn to be surprised. She goes, oh, we all thought you died. <laughs> uh, my uncle Yehuda came back oh to my, my father, to our grandfather, your father, my grandfather, with your coat all covered in blood. We all thought that a yeah, and came dangerous and came animal ate yeah. you up. And Yosef said, no, I got sold as a slave to Egypt. He says, I'm really your uncle Yosef. And he said to her, please, Osnat, will you marry me? You have no idea how petrified I was that I have to marry a guy. And I kept on davening and pleading with Hashem that Hashem should give me a Jewish girl to marry. I want to marry a Jewish girl who will raise my children to be... But how did she end up with Egypt? I told you, she ran away, darling. She, some say that she was actually sold as a slave like Yosef too, but according to, I think they are Barbanel. How old? If I'm not mistaken, Evan is there? I can't, no, what's his name? No, Evan. I forgot the name of these Mepharshim, sorry. Some claim that it was, she was slaved as, sold as a slave. Some say that she actually just ran away. Why? I don't, because she was ashamed that she, that her father was a guy, that he forced did, did she come her mommy back? to marry him. Um, no, she she stays in she stays in uh, Egypt. in Egypt, and she married and children. Osnat and Yosef was so happy. He thanked Hashem that Hashem prepared for him a Jewish girl to marry, a girl who will give him Jewish children, and a girl who will raise his children to love Hashem and love the Torah and love the Jewish people. And of course, love the land of Israel that eventually they'd go back to the land of Israel. Israel. And children, that is how Yosef 
married Osnat. But children, in this story, we learn a few very, very important lessons. Never. Number one, Yosef knew that no matter what, we need to turn to Hashem, we need to be happy, we need to know everything is from Hashem. But number two, that for the Jews to survive in Galut till the coming of Mashiach, and of course past the coming of Mashiach, we need to raise I Jewish said, families. Said, we said. need to marry, you know, make beautiful Jewish homes with a Jewish daddy and a Jewish mommy and raise our children to love Hashem and love the Torah. Okay, should we show everyone? We didn't finish our picture. Okay. Yeah. We it's making, Kayla's birthday suit. Yeah, we didn't finish it, but we're making a cupcake for Kayla. Um, with the number six, because it's almost her birthday. So, happy birthday, Kayla, but not yet. It's coming up in like a week. Wait, who took out the table? 